Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Ghadebiya Palace the Kuwaiti Assistant Under Secretary for Security Border Checkpoints, Major General Sheikh Salim Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Sabah, who is on a visit to the Kingdom in light of the brotherly relations and cooperation between the two countries. His Royal Highness hailed the visit, which embodies the brotherly relations between the two countries. Sheikh Salim conveyed to His Royal Highness the greetings of the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and the Kuwaiti Crown Prince, Sheikh Nawaf. Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah and their wishes of growth and development for the kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister asked him to convey his greetings to the Emir of Kuwait, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and his wishes of advancement and prosperity to Kuwait. His Royal Highness expressed satisfaction for the cooperation and coordination march in the two countries and the development they witness in all fields as a result of the support of the two countries' leaders. He hailed the vital role of the Emir of Kuwait in enhancing the march of the Gulf and Arab Corporation and his efforts in serving humanitarian affairs on the regional and Arab levels, for which he deserves all appreciation and honor. His Royal Highness asserted that Bahraini-Kuwaiti relations are based on a long history of mutual understanding and the future of these relations will be brighter and more prosperous. For his part, the Kuwaiti Assistant Undersecretary for Security Border Checkpoints expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for the warm welcome which reflects his pride in Kuwait and its people commending His Royal Highness's efforts to solidify bilateral relations and his role in enhancing development efforts and maintaining security and stability in Bahrain. He also noted His Royal Highness's efforts in bolstering Bahraini-Kuwaiti relations and the development they witness. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Ghadebiya Palace the Southern Governor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, who presented to His Royal Highness the first edition of Al Janubiya Times, which is a weekly social e newspaper that aims to strengthen communication between people and to promote the most prominent activities, programs, and events in the governorate. His Royal Highness affirmed that the government's priority in various stages of its national action is to continue the development efforts in all the kingdom's cities and villages through developmental projects that enhance the quality of the services provided to citizens and meet their aspirations for high standards of living. He stated that serving citizens is a duty and that achieving the highest levels of development requires concerted efforts, adding that the people and the government are partners in building the country. His Royal Highness hailed the Southern Government's initiative of launching Al Janubiya Times and the values it promotes as a media platform that enhances the principle of 
community partnership. He expressed admiration for the newspaper's advanced level of content and richness in subjects, which reflects the efforts the editorial team exerted in preparing it, wishing them further success. His Royal Highness noted the vital role of media in supporting the development march in various governors through enlightening the community and connecting it to the affairs of their country. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa in developing the Southern Government through developmental projects. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his efforts in developing the country, praising his keenness and follow-up on all the Southern Government's projects. He stated that His Royal Highness's directives represent a course of action for the government to achieve the aspirations of the citizens, adding that His Royal Highness's encouragement is an incentive to make more achievements for citizens. He affirmed that the government's keenness on launching an e-newspaper for its own news stems from the importance of media's role in promoting communication among society members. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Sister, Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa congratulated the representative to His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletic Association and President of West Asian Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa on the outstanding sport achievement at the 18th Aegean Games, which concluded in Jakarta recently. Bahrain achieved the best results by winning 26 medals in different games, which ranked the first among Arab countries in the tournament medals table. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince underlined the continuous efforts of their Highnesses to develop sports performance and encourage Bahraini youth in all fields and sports activities. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also noted the efforts of Bahrain's mission and the Bahrain Olympic Committee at the Asian Sports event, wishing the Bahraini sport further success. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain has made an exceptional achievement in the 18th edition of the Asian Games held in Jakarta, Palembang, Indonesia. Bahrain ranked 11th of the Asian level and first among Arab countries through winning 26 medals. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed pride in this Bahraini achievement, crediting in this regard the care this vital sector received from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who continuously aims to provide an adequate environment for athletes and pave the way for them to make new achievements. Sheikh Nasser continued to state that these Bahraini achievements in the Asian Games are the result of the constant follow-up of their Royal Highnesses, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness also praised the efforts exerted by the First Deputy Premier President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and lauded his successful strategy towards the development of the technical side of the association. Sheikh Nasser added that the national volleyball team showcased a great performance in the Asian Games and was able to qualify to the final match following their streak of victory. His Highness concluded by stating that these achievements shall be a motivation to redouble efforts for future sport events. Deputized by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa opened today IKEA Project Bahrain in the presence of several officials and guests. On the occasion, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his patronage of the official opening of the project, highlighting Bahrain's development in all fields, which embodies the wise vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the care of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the follow-up and support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. Deputy Premier Sheikh Khalid expressed pleasure to open IKEA which he described as one of the most important strategic projects which will contribute to providing ready-to-go assembled furniture in the light of growing demand on housing projects in the new cities. He confirmed the keenness of major companies to invest in the Kingdom of 
Bahrain, which reflects the success and effectiveness of government sustainable economic policies that aim at preserving Bahrain's attractive competitive investment environment. He added that such projects will improve linking Bahrain to regional and international markets, especially with the constant follow-up with the executive committee chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, which helps developing the level of services that improves customs or customs procedures and visas. He also said that such projects with which would create numerous jobs opportunities for Bahrainis in retail fields in the private sectors. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah also expressed thanks to Saudi Arabia's Ghassan Ahmed Al Suleiman Furniture Trading Company and Swedish IKEA for selecting the Kingdom of Bahrain to implement its project that is considered the largest in the region, wishing the company and its staff continued success. IKEA Bahrain has been able to achieve a 66% Bahrainization percentage, providing solid career opportunities for Bahrain citizens, with a big chance at self-development and career growth. This investment in Bahrain's manpower is equally invested in finding local businesses and partners to cooperate with. Diversity is seen not only in IKEA's wide selection of house items and furniture, but they make it a point to have diversification of cultures even in their staff and corporate events. This fits in perfectly with the already existing atmosphere of coexistence and diversification in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We are uh, thrilled to have such an international name to be added to the economic landscape of Bahrain. Uh, we thank uh, the owners for their investment in Bahrain, for their, for their confidence in uh, investing in the Bahraini economy, setting up the largest IKEA store uh, in the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, we feel that this, this investment will add uh, value for our consumers, it will create job opportunity for our uh, citizens and definitely having an international name like IKEA and Bahrain is a testament to the uh, economic uh, stability of our economy and to the attractiveness of foreign investment in our economy. We are really impressed first with the, with the talent in Bahrain. Um, I believe there is a lot of very good talent in Bahrain and we are able, alhamdulillah, to actually attract a lot of these good talents. Uh, in Saudi, it took us maybe a bit of more time to reach to maybe uh, more now we're more than 70% Saudi in Saudi. However, alhamdulillah, from start in Bahrain, we were able to start with 66%, which is we believe is a great achievement. And any market we enter into, we, we do look into the local market and, and try as much as possible to create uh, partnership and corporations. Uh, with the local companies and we do have we we have one of our partners in Bahrain is also flow uh, Pro progressive logistics okay is one of our partners who are also our partners in also in Saudi Arabia 
and the same goes for in, in the media sector and other, other sectors as well. well. IKEA is a diverse uh, company, even from the product development we can say, all the way to the shop floor where we actually meet the co-workers. So we actually are working hard to get diversity so we will actually meet the market in the best way. And here it's really interesting in Bahrain because you have such a, such a broad variety of people and, and where people is coming from. So I really hope and think that we can uh, provide and cater for for, for the many in the country. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, affirmed that the meeting of the Bahraini Omani Joint Committee reflects the keenness of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Sultan bin Said of Oman to further develop the long standing bilateral relations and cooperation in all fields for the benefit of both countries and people. He added that the meeting aims at continuing the successful march of the Gulf Cooperation Council to achieve prosperity and stability for all its people. People. The Minister of Foreign Affairs delivered a speech during the sixth session of the Bahraini Omani Joint Committee, which was held today in Salala, Sultanate of Oman, during which he noted that such meetings provide several opportunities to review and develop bilateral cooperation in all areas and strengthen joint coordination in all fields. He went on to highlight the role of these meetings in supporting the two countries in the face of all regional challenges. Sheikh Khaled expressed thanks and appreciation to the members of the Joint Committee for their continued efforts in discussing means to further enhance cooperation between the two countries. He highlighted the signed memorandums of understanding in the fields of culture, tourism cooperation and civil retirement, as well as the operational programs on environmental protection, climate affairs and youth and sports. The two sides discussed regional and international affairs of mutual interest and had the same views in that regard. To affirm the importance of continuing and enhancing the cooperation between the two brothers, Brotherly countries, the two sides signed memorandums of understanding and operational programs in various areas. Electricity and Water Affairs Minister Dr. Abdul Hussain bin Ali Mirza inaugurated the first edition of SmartSec Bahrain Cybersecurity and Blockchain Conference today. More in this report with Shoga Mohammed. The first edition of the SmartSec Conference kicked off today. Jointly organized by Temkin Labor Fund and Bahrain Technology Company Society in partnership with the Information and E-Government Authority. SmartSec is a two-day cybersecurity and blockchain event that aims to bring the best international professionals in said fields under one roof. Uh, this conference on cybersecurity comes as uh, another support for the government of Bahrain's drive to increase the use of technology and IT technology in all its uh, operations and uh, arrangements. Organizations must resort to new ways of avoiding such risks, such as blockchain, uh, using uh, the white hat hackers or ethical hackers, who can penetrate uh, the operations, the, the electronic operations, and find the weaknesses which needs to be overcome. The uh, blockchain is a new trend and uh, uh, everybody looking to benefit out of uh, blockchain. Uh, if some data is not available or uh, systems to be developed, uh, cost a lot of money. Uh, the blockchain uh, provides a way of uh, uh, offering the data uh, through uh, a different concept, let's say. And uh, uh, in Bahrain we are working, uh, you know, uh, with the government, the uh, CBB, uh, the EDB, and uh, uh, all looking forward to benefit out of the uh, blockchain, uh, saving money and uh, to innovate in terms of the technology and providing uh, services that was uh, uh, difficult uh, earlier uh, to offer. Cybersecurity is an essential part of people's lives because most daily actions involve the use of technology in one way or another. The conference provides attendees with a unique opportunity to get acquainted with the latest trends, innovation and solutions featured by the international cybersecurity and blockchain community. Cybersecurity becomes a very crucial issue when it comes to all uh, international communication or local communication. At the same time, blockchain is a new technology which will enable the users and the supplier to get rid of the mediator. We've seen that technology advances very fast, faster than people can cope today, and technology in the hands of everybody. 
So two things that this event today handles, it handles cyber security and how security is today is important for our homes, for our businesses and for our country. So there is a good focus on this on, on a, from a holistic approach and this never happened before in Bahrain. More than 250 delegates, including representatives from government bodies and ministries, took part in the conference, which will continue tomorrow with further panel discussions and debates. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Mohammed. The Minister of Works, Municipalities and Urban Planning Affairs, Engineer Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf, today opened the third Sustainable Smart Cities Conference with the participation of international experts from the Regional Office of the United Nations Environment Program, the UNEP, and other Bahraini experts in the field of smart applications and environmental sustainability. More in this report by Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Bahrain Sustainable Smart Cities Forum's third edition brings together an expert community of academics, decision makers, researchers, practitioners, real estate developers, investors, and policy makers from the urban sphere on regional and international levels to discuss the immense challenges of building a sustainable smart city. In the opening, the Minister of Works, Municipalities and Urban Planning Affairs, Engineer Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf, pointed out the significance of the conference where international and local expertise integrate in the interest of the national development process and assured that there are substantial opportunities to build inclusive, sustainable smart economies through business leadership and partnerships. Nearly 150 representatives from government and private sector organizations were participating, competent to transform sustainable smart cities into reality. The first phase of, of uh, the conservation of uh, energy in, uh, in the uh, government buildings, the first stage had been completed and we are, are in the process now of, uh, of uh, 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 generalizing uh, this, uh, these practices in other government offices and, be, and uh, such practices is now part of the uh, design process of all the government buildings which the ministry is uh, uh, responsible for. Moreover, an awards ceremony was held where the minister distributed a number of associated awards aimed at encouraging initiatives and projects in the field of sustainable smart cities in both public and private sectors. The R Capita Building won the Smart Building Award. Batelco's B Wallet won the Smart Banking Solution Award. The multi-story parking in Avenues Mall by Barigh Al Ritaj won the Best Solar Energy Project. Nahil Project to Combat Red Palm Weevil won the Best Agricultural Smart Project. Echo School and Echo Bus Project won the Community Partnership Towards Sustainability Award. Durrat Al Bahrain's Smart Home Systems Project won the Smart Real Estate Project Award. Ministry of Works, Municipalities and Urban Planning Affairs Project, Sheikha Moza bint Hamad Al Khalifa School won the Smart School Building Award. And finally, Al Janabiya Park Project of the Northern Region Municipality won the Sustainable Smart Public Park Award. A very important and strategic conference for Bahrain and for the region. Uh, as we all know, the subject of the conference, the smart cities, uh, is a very rich subject for engineers. It consists of uh, subjects related to electronic engineers, hardware engineers, uh, and IT ones. Steps that we have done, like um, formulating the vision, mission, objectives, and started to approach different stakeholders uh, to us, uh, governmental authorities who are basically the regulators, property developers who are taking the lead to build uh, smart cities, uh, engineering offices from my current position and the uh, Council for Regulating the Practice of Engineering Professions. The forum discusses essential topics that cover the ways for a smart economy, smart sustainable living, smart mobility, smart government initiatives, smart sustainable environment and entrepreneurship and innovation for smart cities. Challenges of building a sustainable smart city are immense and require collaborative and innovative thinking by all sectors of society, gathered today by Bahrain Sustainable Smart Cities Forum 2018. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul -Ghafur. 
The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the STIA, expressed sincere gratitude and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for receiving yesterday the Council President and its members. This came during the Council's meeting today, chaired by the STIA's President, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, who said that the meeting with His Majesty had been an opportunity to be enlightened by His Majesty's directives. He added that His Majesty's role is appreciated in protecting and serving faith and promoting promoting its noble values and the preservation of uh, sanctities, uh, thus making Bahrain a model of tolerance and peaceful coexistence. Sheikh Mohammed praised the remarkable success of Hajj this year, extending appreciation to the great efforts exerted by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs held its second introductory meeting for the ambassadors accredited to the Kingdom of Bahrain to shed light on Bahrain's candidacy for the membership of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva for the period of 2019 to 2021. At the beginning of the meeting, the Assistant Foreign Minister Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabur al Dosiri welcomed the attendees, giving a detailed explanation on the candidacy of Bahrain for the membership of the Human Rights Council of the United Nations for the period from 2019 to 2021 in the election scheduled for October 2018 in New York City. He also reviewed the efforts and achievements of the Kingdom, the Kingdom's program for candidacy for the Human Rights Council membership and the voluntary pledges submitted by Bahrain for the membership of the Council in order to enhance and protect human rights and promote culture and awareness at the national, regional and international levels. The Assistant Foreign Minister affirmed the Kingdom's outstanding record in the field of protection and promoting human rights and its distinguished position at the regional and international levels under its constitutional, legal, judicial and comprehensive administrative system based on its religious and cultural values and in line with the international human rights standards under the reformist approach of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The first Deputy Speaker of the Council of Representatives and Head of the Representatives Council's delegation for the Joint Parliamentary Government Committee to discuss the retirement law, Ali Abdullah Al-Aradi, reviewed during a consultative meeting the vision of the parliamentary delegation on the two draft laws concerning retirement. The meeting also discussed the legislative formulation of the law articles. Al-Aradi pointed out that all are working with utmost care and responsibility to implement the royal directives to achieve the preservation of pension funds and its ability to meet its obligations and reform of the pension system. The parliamentary delegation presented amendments and a new vision which requires the supervision of the Financial Administrative Control Bureau on the recommendations of the Board of Directors of the General Authority for Social Insurance. The proposed amendments of the parliamentary delegation also impose a direct mechanism for parliamentary oversight on the decisions made by the Board of Directors.